what do we got going today? Well, on the travel trailer, there's one thing that I still just really don't like the way I've got it set up, and uh, that's this right here. I moved this spare tire up to the tongue to physically get it off of the back bumper because the back bumper is where, if you recall in the other video, we installed a bike rack for the heavy e-bikes. Had to get that spare tire off of there. So I put it up here and it rides okay there. It doesn't quite rub against the front of the trailer and you can get the sway bar just to clear it, just enough to get it up onto this rack there, but it still is kind of in the way. I just, I don't know, I don't really like, let's just say it's not ideal having it there. Uh, so what I think I wanna do is to explore the idea of taking this off of there and getting it to set horizontally underneath the tongue with one of the spare tire jacks like you would use under the back of a pickup truck where you, you put the jack handle in and you crank it to let the spare down and you crank it back up to tuck it in tight. So I'm going to measure this up, make sure I got room underneath there. I'll have to, I'll have to miss these appendages like these load distributing hitch brackets extend down below the bottom of the frame and those could be a potential obstacle. Let's get down underneath here and see what we can find. Okay, so if we've got this obstruction here, or that tire can't come forward from this point here, but it can arc in between them. And what I just measured on the tire, I could come about, I don't know, three, three or four inches from there. So, and it's a 27 inch tire. What I'm gonna have to do is move this piece. That's a, just a clamp. So I will move the clamp from this position out to this and uh, put it into the side or the bottom of the, the battery box. Uh, same on this one. I may need to move two of those. Okay, so the next thing I gotta do is to take the spare down from where it is and use a floor jack to kind of temporarily hold it up into that spot just to reconfirm my measurements. All right, what have we got so far here? Coming in as expected, right? Tucking up against that. Back here, it's good. That's good. So, if that was another inch and a half up, then it would be, I think, plenty high above the ground. So, I think that's going to be a good location. So, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with it and get the get the cables out of the way. Oh, the other thing I need to do is to figure out exactly where I'm going to align the jack. Okay, and that's gonna be a potential obstacle because the jack I'm gonna put on here looks like it's gonna to have to correspond with almost the dead center of that battery box in its present location. All right, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to reposition that battery box. All right, this is the jack I intend to use. It's just a spare tire hoist, but you can see that's gotta go right in the middle there. Look at this thing. This fits exactly between the rails that currently support the battery. So all I have to do is move that battery so that I can mount this thing straight up over top of the center of where the spare tire is going to sit. So 
Okay, this is my this is my battery tray, and this wire packet goes under the battery tray and along the bottom edge of the frame rail. If I can loosen it up at the front from wherever it's germinated and bring it up over top of this battery tray and into the tongue, then that would be perfect because then that would avoid any obstruction on the bottom side where the tire is going to be wanting to pinch up against and, and ride. So let me next see about rotating this battery 90 degrees. Thirty-two, so sixteen, and right about there. So that's where that thing wants to sit. So yeah, that battery is going to have to sit parallel to the trailer like that. And I do not want this plastic battery box riding on these edges of this channel because those will certainly wear through. This one would be happier if the cords were coming off the back of the box. And this other one really has the length to where it can go either way. Oh, that, look at there. Isn't that looking sweet? So that has just plenty of slack there, so there's not, not going to be any any problems with that at all so i've always wondered if if uh, it's more interesting to talk through the thought process on how i do projects like this and how i work it out and come up with a plan and look for obstacles and overcome those obstacles is that interesting or is it more interesting if i just shut my mouth and just roll tape and, uh, and then fast forward through the whole thing so go ahead and comment if you have a strong opinion about that one way or another, go ahead and comment below. I'd be interested to, to know where I should draw the line in the future in terms of running my mouth versus running my tools. This just needs a, a flat plate across there to distribute the weight off of these sharp edges. These are the, these are the ones that I want to get them away from the bottom of the frame rail. And to do that, I got to put them up over the battery trays there. So I got to figure out where they terminate and move them accordingly. And it looks like the two fat ones just come out here to my pigtail that goes over the back of the car. And then this thinner one, this thinner one runs up to my electric tongue jack. And let me show you something on that. Notice that? See that? It'll move if you smack it, but um, it just seems pretty stupid to have one of these on your trailer that you have to keep smacking it. Of course, you know what this means. Um, uh, this means this would be a good time for you to subscribe so that you don't miss the project that will be coming up real soon where I replace this standard equipment tongue jack with an aftermarket replacement. Because if I've got this thing half apart to do the spare tire relocation project, I'm not likely to put it back together between now and when I put this jack in place. Here we got these two these two things there and and they just unplug.
Okay, I have the wiring out of the way. I need something that is an 8 inch by a 11 at the minimum. 12 would be good. Actually, I wish I had a battery tray. All right, let's look around and see what we can find. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this old bed frame and use the channel for it to cut some pieces off and make a new battery box holder. Yeah, right in there like that. That bed rail will be a perfect battery box. I can cut that, weld it up real quick, and have that attached in no time. Okay, here's the battery tray ready to go on there. I welded these two tabs on here uh, and my camera was off while I was doing that. So you missed that part, sorry about that. But these are to be able to attach it to the other frame rail or the other battery tray that was going crosswise on the tongue, which this will be now sitting perpendicular to that. So let's go fit it up and see how it works. Let's see. Right in there like that. There's one of the tabs there. So now this is the block that I made. It's treated wood, spray painted, and I had to hollow out the center of it so that I can push this down through it. That's what tight looks like there. I'll we'll just have to watch out for really steep driveway approaches. 
pressed over it, it could potentially rub, I suppose. We'll just see how that goes. All right, don't forget to subscribe. If you like modifications to the travel trailer and, and boondocking and, and gardening and fly fishing and camping and repairing stuff around the yard, go check out my channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Beautiful channel out.